and today we're going to be reviewing the Makita DML815 18 volt LED work light. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, starting off at the bottom of the tool, we have the battery slot. The battery slot will accept the Makita LXT 18 volt batteries, and overall, it does a good job of keeping the batteries nice and firm and secure. There really isn't any jiggling or wiggling, and so overall, the whole battery slot gets a pass from me. I also tested it with a couple of batteries I adapted over from a couple different manufacturers, and it seemed to work fairly well. Just remember, if you are adapting batteries over, you do that at your own risk. Okay, next up we have the grip. Now the grip on this particular tool is a fairly nice rubberized grip that provides plenty of traction or just gripping area for your hand regardless of what size it is. I wouldn't say that it's a soft grip like uh, Makita claims, but I wouldn't say that it's absolutely hard either. It's definitely softer than the hard plastic of the tool, but at the same time it's not as soft as the material that Ryobi uses on their tools. So overall the grip is a nice quality grip and I don't think it's going to wear out or fall off or anything like like that so overall the grip gets a pass okay next up we have the sling mount points there's two sling mount points one is located near the top by the tilting head and then the other one is located down by the battery both are made out of metal the top one appears to be a sort of a key chain like ring that has been uh, put basically uh, in between a plastic post with a screw going through it and overall it seems to hold up just fine and I haven't had any complaints about the top one. The bottom one is made out of metal and it's definitely a little bit higher quality and it's definitely way thicker although the amount of area that you have to put a sling hook through is not as big and so you'll probably be limited on what kind of slings you can use with the bottom point. But overall I don't have any complaints when it comes to the sling mount points or the hanging hook points on this particular light and I think Makita did a good job with them so it gets a pass. Okay next up we have have the on off switch. The on off switch is located where the trigger would normally be found on a drill and it is covered with a uh, rubberized cover and overall it seems to do a fairly good job of well turning the light on and off and that's about all that it does do. This light only has a single mode on and then off. So technically would that be two? I don't know. But overall it seems to work just f fine and I don't have any major complaints. Well, except for maybe the fact that it only has the one mode. Now typically I like having only one mode, but when you have a work light that is costing as much as this particular light costs, it would have been nice to maybe include a secondary switch where that would have given you the option to cycle through some additional modes, maybe like a high, medium, low, you know, just for the right light for the right situation. But overall, I don't have any complaints when it comes to the build quality and overall operation of the switch, so it gets a pass in my book. And next up, we have the hanging hook. The hanging hook is made out of metal, and then the metal hook is attached to a fabric lanyard, which has a clip at the end of it for, well, clipping it to the light, either at the bottom point or at the top point that you can use for slings as well. Overall the hang hook is a cool feature that they include. I just don't find it all that useful and while I am glad that they included it, I just don't really see the point in it because generally when you're hanging a light, it never seems to stay pointed at whatever you're working on. So at the end of the day, it is nice that they include it. I just don't think it's all that useful. And next up we have the tilting head. Now the tilting head on this particular light is a fairly nice tilting head. You have 12 different positions you can choose from that are arranged from the 60 degree mark to the 110 degree mark which gives you plenty of options and a lot of versatility for how you want to position the light. Overall I really do like the tilting head on this light and I actually really prefer the tilting head over the Ryobi light that I reviewed last time. The Ryobi light used a friction based uh, tilting head system which works great if you leave it on a hard work surface but if you're carrying it or driving down a bumpy road and you need the light to stay in a particular position, it's definitely going to adjust itself and it's not going to be work nearly as well. But the Makita fixed that with having the hard positions or the positive positions in between the different tilt angles. So quite frankly, I really think the tilting head on this particular light is far superior to the tilting head that you find on the Ryobi light. So at the end of the day, the tilting head definitely gets a pass and is definitely better than, like I said, than the one that you find on the Ryobi light. So moving on. And last but not least, we have the light output or the LED bead itself. Now the LED bead on this particular light is actually four LED beads, which actually gives you some advantages over a light that only has a single bead. Now the light in the picture on the left is one with a single LED bead and the one on the right is the Makita, which has the four LED beads and they are placed right next to each other. As you can tell from the picture, the one with the single LED bead is definitely going to be much more, well, focused and it's not going to give you nearly as much 
width when it comes to the displayed light, and the one to the well right, it, which is the Makita, is giving you a much bro broader light, which is going to be useful for when you're working in tight uh, space, and it's also going to give you a much more even light, which is also useful for when you're working in a cramped space. So overall, that's one advantage that the four LED beads has over the single LED bead. Another advantage that having four LED beads has is the fact that if one of the beads burns out or has a defect, you still have the additional three beads to get light from. This will definitely provide a longer life to the tool overall, and in my opinion, is definitely a, another nice bonus feature to have for just overall reliability. Now, with that being said, those are kind of the pros of this light. In my opinion, this light also has a couple of cons, but remember, this is my opinion. I personally really don't like how warm the Makita is when it comes to its light output color. It's way too warm and it's warmer than what you typically find in a, well, an old style house light. Or, you know, when the LEDs or incandescents first came out, everybody was complaining about the color hue or, or temperature of the light. The Makita is just, it's way too warm. It doesn't look right and it doesn't give you an accurate color representation of what you're shining it on. It's going to look way too warm. So if you're trying to figure out what kind of liquids are on the floor, if you're trying to figure out where a leak is coming from, or if the drywall is discolored and you need to figure out how bad the leak is, this light isn't going to give you a very accurate representation of that particular, well, problem. The Ryobi has a much more color neutral light which will give you a far better accurate color representation than what the Makita can and so I would definitely say that the light color is a downside to this particular light. Another downside is the fact that the Makita is actually less powerful than the Ryobi. The Ryobi's beam is much tighter and so it's brighter but at the same time it's also well the Ryobi's 280 lumens the Makita's 160 lumens. That's over a 100 and uh, lumen difference. 120 lumens to be exact. So when you're working or trying to point the light at something in the distance, say something like a car in the ditch up ahead or an animal in your yard that's far away, the Makita isn't going to give you as much light as Ryobi can and the light's not going to be as, power, as uh, noticeable since it's a warmer light and so it's not going to stand out as much. So just overall the Makita's light just isn't as good as the Ryobi's light. But, like I said, there's certain situations where the Makita is better than the Ryobi, and there's certain situations where the Ryobi is better than the Makita. It comes down to personal preference, and what your personal preference is. And also, if you don't like adapting batteries, and what battery system you're currently bought into, if you're only bought into one battery system. But I digress. So at the end of the day, the Makita has a lot going for it, but it also has a lot going against it. So, it really does come down to a personal preference. With that being said, let's move on to the pros and cons. And the first pro is 18 volt. 18 volt means that you'll be able to use this with Makita's LXT lithium batteries. And overall, if you choose to, you can adapt batteries over from other brands via third party adapters. Just remember that you do that at your own risk. Four LEDs. Having four LEDs means that the light will be spread out more evenly and it will also give you greater reliability, say if one of the beads accidentally burns out or has a defect or something. So overall, having four LEDs is definitely a pro in my opinion. Two sling points. Having two different points on this particular tool that you can mount a sling is definitely useful and a pro in my opinion. I forgot to mention it earlier in the video, but there's also a strap point down by where the secondary sling point near the battery is. And so that's also another useful feature and a pro in my opinion. Clicking tilt, or the positive stops in between the different positions on the tilting head. Overall, having these positive stops is definitely going to make this light way more useful than, say, the Ryobi for when you're using it in a moving vehicle that's on a rough road, or if you're running or jogging with this particular light for whatever reason. So quite frankly, I would definitely consider having the positive stops to be a pro in my opinion. Hanging hook. Overall, I'm not a huge fan of the hanging hook itself, but I am glad that they decided to include it, and I think some people will find it useful. So this is definitely a pro in my opinion. And the first meh is the warm light. Now I can't really say that it's a con, though in my opinion it is a con, because some people might like it. And it's not really a negative, it's just more of a personal preference. But for me that warm light is just too much of a bleh or meh. So quite frankly, in my opinion it's a con, but I'm not going to put it in the con category because some people might like it. One mode. Now I like only having one mode, but some people might want more than one mode. And, well, considering the price you're paying for this particular light, and having more than one mode, well, that would make sense. Having two switches 
would have fixed my complaints and uh, that would have been useful but for whatever reason only having one mode in this particular light seems to be kind of a meh in my opinion and the first con is price now the price on this light is now $41.49 which is a dollar 49 higher than when I started filming so the price is uh, going up apparently overall the price is too much for this particular light in my opinion considering you only get the one mode and the light output is only 160 lumens and it's a warm light output that doesn't give you accurate colors so in my opinion this is definitely a con when it comes to the price of this particular tool and the final con is 160 lumens 160 lumens will provide plenty of light for when you're working close up on something but if you're shining the light at something in the distance 160 lumens just isn't going to give you enough light since you're not able to focus the beam down at all so in my opinion 160 lumens is a con and not a good thing when it comes to this particular light and that's it for the pros and cons. Final thoughts on this particular light. This light has a lot going for it, but it has two major downsides that are kind of deal breakers, at least for me personally. I really do not like the color of the light output. The light output color, it just is not accurate and it definitely is distracting and makes it hard to identify the color of things if it is a color sensitive situation, which may sound silly, but it actually comes up more than you might think. Now, the second major downside is just how much light this light is putting out. While you, when working in close quarters, that's not a big deal, but if you're going to be using this light outside, it makes a big difference if you're trying to see something that, say, is over 150 feet away from you. So, in my opinion, those two downsides are kind of deal breakers for me, and I personally would rather adapt batteries over into a different branded tool than, well, say, buy this particular light, considering that this particular light is a little bit overpriced to begin with. So, at the end of the day, it's going to be up from you but for me personally this is a light I'm going to take a pass on or at least I would have if it didn't come with a tool kit that I had purchased so yeah and that is it for this particular video if you liked it please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time god bless